Super quick, guys. If you guys are interested in any Kia models at all whatsoever or any pre-owned vehicles, come check out Rick Case Kia at Sunrise, Florida. They have a lot of good deals going on, including a nice warranty package. Obviously, with Kia models, you can go all the way to 200,000 mile warranty if you like. So if you're interested, come check out Kia at Rick Case. Kia Niro's always had an interesting place in Kia's lineup. It wasn't the first hybrid that Kia's ever made, but it was the first dedicated model as a hybrid vehicle. So kind of think of this like a Prius for the Korean market, though it did have a little better styling in my opinion than the Prius and the interior to itself, that's something we're gonna speak about now. Right, now sitting in the inside of a 2022 Kia Niro, I love the interior assortment of this vehicle. It is a little, it is significantly older, of course, compared to the new one. The new one is a lot more modern, has a lot more features inside, and it's, it feels nicer. But this one is more of a standardized car. For instance, you do have your actual analog switches here. You do have dual zone climate control in here. So that's something to just keep in mind of. So, and it's all physical touch switches and, bu and buttons. So that's something that if it's something that you're looking for, rather than maybe like the touch sensitive uh, system that the new Nero has, you may have to consider one of these rather than a newer one. You also do have basically a fully digital gauge cluster right here at the front. It's not as modern as the new one, but it is very, very good. At the same time, you do have your gas gauge just right here on the right, temperature gauge on the left, and you do have a lot of information that does tell you about your efficiency, your fuel range, all those things in the inside. What I do also, what I was actually surprised with is that this thing does have folding mirrors. I was genuinely surprised by that all the windows by the way there's only one window here that's fully automatic so you just tap it and you just it goes down or up by itself so that's something to also keep in mind though the rest of the windows you have to hold it and it'll go down and up so not a really big deal and i'm saying i'm actually genuinely surprised that this thing does have um paddle shifters right here in the front so i guess if you want to feel a little sporty you're more than happy to feel sporty in here. So um, that's something else that I think is pretty cool. Comparing to the new one, I do notice that this thing does not have uh, heated nor cool seats in here, let alone no heated seats at all. So if that is something that you're kind of looking for, this Nero does not have it. Mind you, this is the fully loaded touring trim that I'm sitting in. I don't know if there's extra options you can get with these things, but I do notice, and I wanted to just kind of point out it there. Um, it does not heat it, does not have heated seats, does not have cooled seats. This doesn't even have a heated steering wheel from what I'm seeing. But that's something to just, I guess, keep in mind of if that's what you're looking for. I don't also, I also do see that it does have radar cruise control. So that's something pretty convenient to have. This generation Nero also does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it does have the same as like infotainment system as the new Nero. So it's very easy to use. It's super responsive and everything. It even has the same hybrid system to where you can actually check your charge, check your fuel mileage, just to see how you're doing when it comes to fuel mileage and stuff. And inside the gauge, you, it can actually tell you how aggressive you are driving. So if you're an aggressive driver by any means, it will tell you you are an aggressive driver. So even driving style, that's where it is. That's where the menu is at. It's economical, um, normal, and aggressive. So that's something to just keep in mind of. If you're an aggressive driver, it will tell you that you're an aggressive driver. So that's something to, I guess, you can have yourself to just make sure that you're stocking your fuel mileage and everything like that. So basically the interior in here is very simple. I like the design of this. I personally, for me, I like the design of this a little bit more than a newer one, just cause I'm a little bit more old school when it comes to this. I like the fact that it does have Harman Kardon. So if you want it to feel luxurious and stuff, you do have Harman Kardon um, speakers in here. So that's something nice to have. There is no USB-C ports in here. You do have a 12 volt outlet here in the bottom and just normal your, your normal USB-A ports here in the center console and you also do have your wireless charging pad since this is obviously a fully loaded model it has it so that's something pretty nice to have and you do have a little bit more storage comparing to the other one compared to the new nero in the center console however there's not as much space in the center area rather compared to the newer nero so you do have your normal uh cup holders here and everything in here the materials here, it is cheaper significantly than the other Nero. I mean, it kind of, it feels the same relatively, but there is a lot more standard plastics in here rather than recyclable materials. I mean, you do have normal leather. You don't have this recyclable material comparing to the Nero on the, the newer one on the um, headliner and everything like that. It just feels like a normal car just with a hybrid powertrain. So anyways, let's go in the back seat. 
and we're gonna just talk about the space and everything like that. We're gonna go over the trunk as well as the powertrain, comparing both of them apples to apples. All right, now sitting in the back seat of the Kia Niro, the 2022 model specifically. So one thing I do notice is comparing to the 2024 model and here, this area is a little bit tighter. I did not expect the, the new Niro to actually have more space in the interior since they're both basically the same exact dimensions. However, there is a little bit of a difference that you notice. I mean, up in the front, the space is relatively the same. I don't really notice a difference or anything like that. Obviously the design is different. You do have more storage capabilities in the newer Nero. However, in the back seat, it's a slight bit tighter. I mean, not to say that the, that this Nero um, is tight by any means. I actually fit back here. I have at least about like half an inch of leg room in here. If I decide to just crunch out my legs up in the front, however, I can just spread out. I can also recline a little bit back and I'm perfectly fine. I like the back seats in this one better than the newer one, just simply for the reason that this one doesn't have as much like lumbar support on my back um compared to the newer one so that's just something to kind of keep in mind of so i mean if people like lumbar support then you kind of you got to get that feeling on the newer one this one it just feels like an old back seat what you also do have is two couples here on the center area so in the center armrest two cup holders there's no heated or cold seats here in the rear it's kind of to be expected to be honest with you you do have one automatic switch here and this piano black uh material right here on the door handle some may like it some don't you pick and choose whatever flavor you like so but it's just there just wanted to point that out there and something that i like is it does have uh rear ac vents so something that you can kind of control with this little switch here and that's pretty much it that's all you really get here um comparing to the newer nero the newer nero does have charging ports that are built in with the seat as well into the center area of the rear seats so that's something to just keep in mind of this one does not have any charging ports at all in the rear whatsoever so you're kind of more screwed there if that's something you're looking for so the new one has it this one doesn't so that's just something to kind of keep in mind of when looking and shopping for one of these things um also pretty much you do have a cup holder here that you can fit like a thin bottle in here so it's a nice space to be back here so it's relatively comfortable i can't really complain too much i have been in back seats of vehicles that are about the same size as this and they feel miserable in the back seat this one actually has a great amount of space. I can fit fine here, even behind myself for being six feet tall. So I can't complain about the space in the back of the 2022 Nero. Trunk space in the first generation Kira Nero, it's quite large for the size of the vehicle. It does have 19 cubic feet of space with the seats up, but when you decide to fold them down, it jumps all the way to 54 cubic feet of space, which is quite large to be really honest with you. Now, comparing to the second generation Nero, it is smaller, but not by much. Under the hood, you're going to find a 1.6 liter hybrid four cylinder that is mated to a six speed automatic transmission. Now, in terms of miles a gallon, it is 53 in the city and 48 on the highway. Now, also keep in mind, comparing to the second generation, yes, the second gen Nero is more efficient. However, as a first hybrid, pretty good. All right, so now we're going to just drive around the parking lot really quick in this older Nero. And we're just kind of talk about like the basics of like what you get in here. How does it feel? So let's get started. So right off the bat, this engine is very, very quiet. The transitions between the engine and, you know, the battery to the engine, it's relatively smooth. Obviously, since it's going to be an older vehicle, expect it to not be as refined as like the newer one per se. The newer one is a lot more refined and it's a lot more quieter. That's not to say that this thing is not quiet by any means at all whatsoever. It's really quiet. It's very smooth. And personally, to me, I like the seating position much better in this one than the newer one. Obviously, there is some changes when it comes to suspension. You may feel that the suspension in the newer Nero is a lot softer. It's a lot nicer. The interior is a lot more refined. Excuse me. In the newer one rather than the older one. The older one does have a pretty nice setup in the interior and everything like that. However, when it comes down to just basics and everything, um, you're going to notice that the newer one does have a lot nicer refinement. However, talking about the rest of the basics in this interior. So what you do notice is that there's not as many features in here like what key, newer Kia models have. For instance, like with the blind spot cameras and stuff. This does have blind spot monitoring. So that's something that is nice. However, it doesn't have a blind spot camera or anything like that. So that's something that if you're looking for that, this one doesn't have it. However, what it does have is enough features to kind of tell you on the trim meter and everything like that and the seats here are relatively comfortable. I did say also that whenever I drove the newer Nero, it did have a little bit of a higher seating position for my taste. This one, it feels a little bit lower to me, 
Like, I, I mean, it sits a little high, obviously, for an SUV. However, it does sit low to my taste to where I like it. It's adequate. So that's something that I guess it's a good thing in this Nero, even though this interior is significantly older. It's not as nice compared to maybe the newer ones and stuff. But for an actual starter car, this is pretty darn good. As a first car, you could find Neros between around 20 to, you know, around 15 grand, $20,000 in the price range. This particular one is a little bit higher since this is obviously a 22 model and it only has 26,000 miles. They are selling this thing for around $30,000. So that's something to just kind of keep in mind of. If you're looking for a super low mileage, fully loaded model, yes, expect to spend a little bit more money on this rather than, you know, something a little bit cheaper and a little bit of a higher mileage on it. So that's something to keep in mind. But as a first car, honestly, I think this Nero would be kind of perfect for a first car if you're looking for efficiency, if you're looking for a good amount of features, and you're just looking for a vehicle that can go to point A to point B. I really, really like this Nero a lot. I had one for a week because we had a, I had to get a loaner vehicle for just about a week or so. And with this Nero, I fell in love with how fuel efficient it was comparing to the any other vehicle that i've driven at this point you know i used to have a mazda 3 that had the two liter sky the motor i thought that i was a very fuel efficient vehicle but this just hands down takes the cake of that because i mean it's a hybrid and it's a tiny little baby motor compared to my old mazda 3. now i don't really drive anything that's fuel efficient i drive a 2003 sequoia so every time that i'm at the gas pump or every time i wake up and I turn on my truck, I basically cry because the gas meter is always going down every single day. <laughs> this one, it sips fuel and it's very quiet. It's very smooth. It, of course, it doesn't sound as good as my truck, but you know, for an efficient vehicle that has a good amount of space, that has, you know, all the practicality that you need from going to point A to point B, I'm honestly kind of considering one of these myself at some point, maybe later down the road. So if a first car, if you're looking for a first car and you want it to be a fuel efficient hybrid and stuff, I would say the Nero, it's a good um, candidate for your take on this. Obviously you can find them for less than $25,000. That's the kind of like the price point where I would say you can find it as a first car. Um, obviously, you know, not everyone can afford $25,000. I personally can't right now. So, but you can definitely find these things for less than $20,000. Just keep in mind, they, you know, it's a hybrid. So obviously there's some extra maintenance on that. But to be honest with you, as a first car, if you find a good deal on one of these Neros, I would give it a shot. I've spent quite a bit of time on a Kia Nero before, specifically a 2021 Nero as a loaner for an entire week. And I've got to be honest with you, I absolutely fell in love with it. It is not the prettiest thing that you're going to see on the road and it's going to have an interior that's just fits your needs for everyday use of it. But the Nero does one thing right, and that is efficiency. And to be honest, 450 miles out of an 11 gallon tank is something to be quite impressive about. So if you're looking for a hybrid or a first car as a hybrid, give the Nero a shot. Until next time.